So the Earth is a complex system with a huge variety of geophysical processes, many of which are interrelated. We want to understand these processes and monitor their evolution over time, both at small scales and global scales. And remote sensing from Earth orbiting satellites is one of the only ways we can do that effectively, repetitively and consistently for long periods of time. You can see here the wide range of Earth system properties that can be assessed by remote sensing. And this is only a small number of the true range of parameters that we can observe. Most Earth observation satellites are in what's called a low Earth orbit. This means they orbit, uh, generally speaking, north to south or south to north approximately, while the Earth turns below them. And they image a swath of variable width below the spacecraft with their imaging instruments. So you can see here the NASA Terra satellite, which is imaging a swath of around 2,500 kilometers below the satellite. As it's rotating around the Earth, the Earth is rotating below it, and it allows it to cover almost the entire planet every day with imagery. By measuring wide swath imagery such as this, you can image the Earth every day. If you want more spatial detail, you can go to higher spatial resolution imagery, but generally that means a narrower swath width and a longer time between imaging instances. So close to the Earth here, you can see two low Earth orbiting satellites, approximately orbiting north to south or south to north. Much further away from the Earth, we can see what's called a geostationary satellite. That's actually positioned about 36,000 kilometers away from the Earth, and that's just far enough. So it rotates at the same angular rotational rate as the Earth itself. And it's called a geostationary satellite because compared to the Earth itself, it appears to be stationary. In this case, we're looking at the orbit of Meteosat, and it appears to hang directly over Africa and is able to image Africa and Europe every 15 minutes because of this. The disadvantage is you can't see the entire Earth with one geostationary satellite. So in fact, they're positioned in a ring around the Earth with multiple satellites in order to provide a global picture. So with any satellite orbit, the velocity of the satellite is governed by the balance between the centripetal force and the gravitational force. And in the case of geostationary satellites, by positioning the satellite about 36,000 kilometers away from Earth, the velocity of the satellite is such that it takes one day to go round its orbit. And that's the same time as the orbit takes to make one revolution on its axis. And so the satellite appears to hang over the same position above the Earth continuously. Low Earth orbiting satellites are usually placed in something called a sun-synchronous orbit, which means they pass over the Earth at the same local solar time each day, which allows easy comparison between images taken on different dates. If the illumination conditions were changing markedly, it would be difficult to tell whether changes you see in the imagery are due to changes on the land surface or changes in the illumination conditions. But using this sun-synchronous orbit, we can much more easily identify changes in the Earth's environment. Electromagnetic radiation comes in an enormously wide range of wavelengths, which is the distance between the wave crests, if you think of light as a wave. The visible part of the spectrum is actually only a tiny range of wavelengths compared to the overall electromagnetic spectrum. The sun is a very hot object, almost 6,000 Kelvin, and that means it emits preferentially short wavelength electromagnetic radiation. And we use that with our eyes to see. That's the visible part of the electromagnetic spectrum. The Earth being much, much cooler than the sun, maybe about 300 Kelvin on average, doesn't emit visible light at all. It emits light instead at much longer wavelengths, peaking around 10 or 11 microns, maybe 20 times the wavelength of visible light. We need to design special sensors to measure these thermal infrared wavelengths, which we can't see with our eyes. But the advantage of those sensors is that we can use them to tell properties of the Earth that we can't assess with visible light alone. For example, the temperature of the oceans or cloud tops or the Earth's surface itself.